Hi everyone, Stock Mo here. Hope you're having a good day and I'm getting splashed by the old Tesla cat back there. I think I'm gonna leave this one in the video to see some of the things I gotta deal with when I'm in here at the studio. Now, with that being said, the market has been rough. Yesterday, it was absolutely a bloodshed, but I do expect to see a little bit of a recovery. Are we getting back to some of those lows? I know some of the big analysts out there actually thought the January 27th prices were gonna be the lows and we're gonna look into that a little bit, as well as how how bad could it get? And we'll, we'll take a look at all these things and a little bit of the catalyst that are actually affecting them. Now, before we get into them, of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me. Take advantage of the Moomoo link down below. Get up to five free stocks plus deposit $100 or more and you get a free share of Lucid right off the bat for that. So you can take advantage of that. Of course, take a look at the Gemini link, hit that link, deposit, or I should say trade $100 or more and you get a free $20 in Bitcoin. And I got Sandbox over there. My Metaverse play for 2022. They don't have to Weeble, Robinhood, or Coinbase. But once Coinbase adds it, I figure it'll get that pop up there probably around eight to $10 range. So I really like that. Now we can take a look at the markets. What's going on? I wanted to have a talk with everyone today, sit down, get people mentally prepared for what we're dealing with in the market, talk about some of these catalysts of what is going on and where we can go right now as investors. Because for a lot of people out there, they've never been through a major correction slash maybe even bear market, depending where this thing goes. But that's why I'm here. I've been through a whole lot of these, man. I've been through the dot-com bust when the NASDAQ dropped 75% from the highs. We're not even close to that here. And no, I don't believe that's going to happen either. But take a look at this. Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ all down big time. NASDAQ just got crushed. I think Dow Jones, this was the worst day for the Dow Jones in 2022. Russell down 2.46. And you see the VIX spiking. Now, after a day like this, and you can see a lot of my main plays there. After a day like this, you usually expect to see a recovery. Call it a dead cat bounce. And yeah, Tesla cat left the studio, so we're safe here. But call it a dead cat bounce, which in financial terms means when you have a big drop, it comes up a little bit the next day and then it drops some more. Is that going to be the way it happens? Or are we actually going to start seeing some growth here, some movement? Well, I think a lot of that's going to come down to a few things. One, Ukraine and Russia. That is just simmering. We know that Russia now has, I believe, 150,000 soldiers around the border. So there's a lot of things going on. And I'm going to tell you what, until that is settled, you are going to continue to see volatility in the market. Any news stories, any movement, any new things that are reported will continue to drive investors to safety, to cash, to treasuries. They're going to be leaving the market. A lot of them are. Now, me, on the other hand, I am looking at this to take advantage of it because I believe this is going to be a temporary dip. I'm hoping cooler heads come out of this situation and we see the market rebound quickly. I think once we get uh, well, final decision here on what's going to happen one way or the other, then you'll see the market start to price things in. Obviously, an invasion would lead to what I predicted would be a 5 to 10% drop in the overall markets. If they do not invade, I would expect to see the markets actually prop up a good 3 to 5% within a few days, just because that would finally be clearing up. Now, the other thing we got to deal with is the Fed. Oh, uh, Jay Powell down there, always putting my portfolio on his shoulders. That's right. I want to see what Jay Powell does for us. We know that the Fed has that March 15th, 16th meeting coming up. We know that uh, Bullard's out there wanting to be a bull with the rates and move them up at least a half a percent in March. Uh, we're going to find out. I think that also is uh, putting a lot of fear in the market for some people. And the notes were released, I told you two days ago that it was gonna take some time to digest it. Yesterday was that digestion. A lot of uh, a lot of selling out there based on what they were reading into that, you know, and that leads to whatever it is. You, you combine it all, it is it was a mess. Now here's the good news. COVID cases continue to plummet in the US. That's good news. We got good things going on. I think some of the recovery plays are set to blow up. I like Disney. I like a lot of the hotels, some cruise lines. There are plays that I think are ready to snap back. 
and we're going to watch out for who they are. We'll be talking about them more and more on the channel here as we move forward. So if you haven't done it, you're going to want to hit that like, subscribe, and everything else down there uh, that you can to make sure you don't miss any of this. And of course, go over to my Patreon. If you want to see all the latest buys and sells, I got that over there. Portfolios over there. Lots of good things. Private Discord, thousands of members for those who want to support the channel. I highly suggest coming over and joining us. Now, as we move into the actual market, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to prepare for this. Because I've said this before, as you look at this chart, where would you want to buy? You want to buy down at the, the bottom, right? Most people are more comfortable buying when it's green, it's going up, we're all happy. But in truth, when you look at a long-term chart, and we'll, we'll say, uh, we'll look at the five-year chart, where would you want to buy? Of course, you want to buy right here. You want to buy back in, what was that, March 20th, 2020. That was when the fear index was through the roof, everything was the worst. But that's when you wanted to buy. And I said this before to people, we're gonna go up and look at the VIX. Use this as your predictor of, is this, is a, are we close to where it's gonna be the worst it is? And if we go back to that March 20th and look at this, what day was this on? March 20th, the highs. So you see the VIX topping out on the worst possible day. And then where does it go from there? We know that next bull run started and it went way up. And then you can go back and take a look at the NASDAQ back at that time. Uh, we'll go to the five year, make it easier. You can see at that point, and that's when that VIX was through the roof, we went all the way up to 1.133% up. Now, we come back to the VIX, and this is how you use the VIX to figure out if it's a decent time to dollar cost average, a decent time with the fear. And I, I'm pulling this, you know, everybody uses this, but you know, Buffett always says, when everyone else is fearful, I like to be greedy. Something to that effect. And when everybody's greedy, I like to be fearful. I can tell you right now, and I think anybody watching this video knows that most investors right now are pretty fearful. That's why I feel pretty comfortable with the decisions I'm making of buying in. Of course, we have uncertainty based on Ukraine and Russia, uncertainty based on the Fed. But you know, that's gonna clear up. We have uncertainty with COVID, but I think that's moving in the right direction. So we need to see what happens with the Fed. We need to see what happens with Russia slash Ukraine. And more importantly, we need to see if the supply chains around the world can start to clear up to get goods and services to those in need around the world. And as that happens, you're gonna see, I think inflation normally drop automatically just by itself and then you're going to have the fed doing its actions and governments around the world doing their monetary policies to also affect inflation so i think we'll have a lot of things under control and we'll have to wait to see where it goes but check this out though all right so yesterday 28.11 and then you think okay is that a good time to buy i don't know well how about a five-day chart well it seems like the best time to buy would have been right here right so we go to the month chart and then you start to see January 26th was topping out. And then you gotta look at the NASDAQ kind of over that same month, January 26th, 27th, right there it is, the bottom. And so you're seeing the bottom when the VIX is topping out. And then as the VIX changes course, so does the market. And you can see this starting to trend upward. Of course, you're having ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs, and we're now in another down when everybody thinks the, the sky is falling. I do not, I believe, and I still believe, and it doesn't mean this is the truth, it's gonna happen, blah, blah, blah. This is just my take on this. Depending, if you have an invasion, I said it before, you'll see the markets drop five to 10%. But at this point, if we do not see an invasion and we still see kind of what we're seeing, I would think that this would be the low and that we wouldn't see an additional 5% drop at this point, but we don't know. And I keep dollar cost averaging it, and that's how I'm playing it. If I'm wrong, that's fine, I keep buying, and it could go a little bit lower, but uh, I'm in it for the long term at this point. At this point, we already know, if you look at the NASDAQ, it's already down substantial from the highs. And when I see it down there, it's down like 16.97 at this point. To me, that is a fantastic opportunity into a correction to start adding to your portfolio, taking advantage of this, because down the road, and you know the old saying, when in doubt, zoom out, you start zooming out. All right, well, that doesn't look good. That's the Russell 2000, right? How about we zoom out some more? Oh, well, five years, it's up 45, then you go to max, and you start to see. 
Long term, even the Russell continues to go higher, 262%. We go to the NASDAQ, uh, which is, I think is a better interpretation of some of that zoom out when in doubt. And you go five years, you see 134, you go max, and then all of a sudden you see 7,400. That's what really gets people going when you see that. So there is opportunity, and that's what I'm kind of looking for. You can already see the pre-markets, which I've already said this yesterday, that I believe that when you get through a major red day, and I've come on this channel so many times, when you see days where they're like, hey, the Dow had the worst day in a year, or you had the NASDAQ down more than it's been down in two or three years, always expect, unless something changes, that you're gonna have a, a bounce back the next day. Will it hold? Will we go up? Is that the beginning of the next run? We don't know. But with these uncertainties, we do one thing, the volatility is gonna be there. So you can see already in the pre-market, uh, NASDAQ futures up 0 0.75, 0 0.59 S&P, 0.48, 100 points already in the NASDAQ. I'm telling you, the sell-off was too much, just too much. And then you get down and you can take a look at the bonds. They're getting closer and closer. Remember, I said uh, the flattening of the curve is the difference between the 10-year and the two-year. And you can see this drop three, uh, 0.03 percent or three basis points and you can see this one actually dropped seven basis points or 0.07 percent so now they're even more closer by four basis points roughly and so the flattening of the curve continues and so that's something i'm watching for when we see the two-year actually paying a higher percentage than the 10-year that's a pretty good sign. You just might be in store for a recession. And we'll watch, because that's uh, something we all have to watch out for. You won't know, because it takes two quarterly declines in GDP consecutively to know that you're in one. And you don't know you're in one until you are officially in one. You gotta wait for those two quarters. So you never know when that's gonna be happening. Could it be now? Could it be spring? Could it be summer, in the fall, in the winter? We'll find out. I actually think the next, I think the third and fourth quarters are going to be huge uh, for the stock markets. We're getting down there. I think the S&P 500, I'm sticking with that. Uh, I already said this before. I believe the S&P 500 will roll up to between 5,000 and 5,200 by year's end. And I know if we actually look at where that's at right now, it's only a 4,380. And that tells you for that to happen, we're talking 620 points you are looking at a solid 13, 14, 15% gain from here in the next nine months. And yes, I do believe it's going to happen. And I'm actually putting my money where my mouth is. I have the leverage portfolio where I've been buying some leverage plays to do that. So if you'd like to see all them, I highly recommend coming over and joining us at the Patreon link down below. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a wild ride. Last year, we were able to pull 80 to 90,000 in profit out of a $100,000 investment. This year, it is a wild start to the year. So you know there's volatility and it's not in a good way. And But I've been dollar cost averaging in and I got a couple more bucks to put into it, but I'm gonna be moving things around as well as I figure out the best places to take advantage of this. But right now, that's that's what I'm kind of looking at. So this is the update for today. There's a lot of things to watch, but moving forward, I am still loading up on this. I feel so good about the long-term prospects of the S&P 500, the American economy, the world, but we do gotta get through these unknowns. March is gonna be tough for the first few weeks, but after everything's priced in after that, I believe we start that run up. So we'll, we'll see how this all plays out. Now, at that point, if you haven't done it, take advantage of the Moo Moo link down below. Get that free share of Lucid. All you got to do is deposit $100 or more, and you can also get an additional five free shares of stock for hitting certain deposit levels. I got the Gemini link down there where you get $20 in free Bitcoin just for trading $100. You can take advantage of that. They got the sandbox over there, which I absolutely love. And then we got Coinbase down below where you get some free Bitcoin for doing the email and ID verification. You got the BlockFi link down there. Take advantage of that one. And of course, I got the tip ranks and the Patreon link. That's the big one. Come on over and join us. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.